I'm a party people. First questions first as always. What do we always do first? What do we always do first? What do we need to do here? Yeah, we gotta read that question. We have to read the question. So, starting right over here, it says, hey look, if 120 gallons of water are already in the container, about how long will it take to fill? Again, if 120 gallons are already there, how long will it take to fill? So you need to really take your attention to what really matters. And it's what always comes after the who, what, when, where, how many, which of the following. That's always the matter there. So here, about how long will it take to fill? So we're looking for minutes here. You can see these answer choices. They all say minutes. So I'll begin by saying, hey, blank minutes to fill. Again, just taking from what the question is saying, the question sentence, are we in agreement, everybody, yes or no? We're looking for the number of minutes it's gonna to take to fill whatever it is we're talking about. Again, keep it simple, then go through your progression. Start with the question to understand your goal, then we're gonna to move to the information. So, what information do we have? Well, you wanna start off with that same exact sentence because you see that it says, if. Whenever you see the word if, whatever follows it, it's going to be conditional information. So information that is going to help you find that final answer. So here it says, hey, if 120 gallons of water are already in a container. Okay, great. We can say 120 gallons already there. All right, sounds great. Now, next up we see that it says, hey, a 600 gallon water container is being filled at a rate of 28 gallons per minute. So ignoring the numbers, let's just go ahead and tackle the ideas, the context. Uh, Todd, thanks for letting me know. I'm gonna look into that during the next set of questions. So it says, hey, a 600 gallon water container. So this many gallon water containers, so that's how much you can hold. And here's a rate that it is being filled up at. Okay, let's just write the information down and then we'll, we'll talk about it in a moment. So over here, let me highlight this in green. So it can hold 600 gallons. And then over here, we see that it says in purple, filled at a rate of 28 gallons per minute. Everybody, they give it away. They tell you the rate right there. So you can say rate if the fill rate equals 28 gallons per minute. All right, so my part of people, there's actually two different ways that you can do this problem. Number one, as uh, I forgot who said it right over here. So Chris Lane, yes, you said it perfectly. You can use the solving equations work problem method or y equals mx plus b. You can absolutely use that here, and you can also use distance equals rate times time. Either one is gonna work perfectly fine, and I'm gonna show you how both of them can work perfectly fine. So, let me go ahead and take this here, make this just a little smaller, put it over there, and let's zoom in. My party people, let's show you first y equals mx plus b. So, when we're using y equals mx plus b, my party people, well, the thing is, this is, you know, as long as you know what each of these pieces mean, you're good, you are good. So let me just remind you here, over here, b is what's in the beginning. So that is what's there in the beginning. Your n is gonna be your rate. And then y and x, those are gonna be essentially the time and the result after that much time. So typically right over here, I'm gonna write this in, uh, let's go ahead and say red. So this is gonna be time. And then the Y is gonna be the result after time. So for those of you, no worries, Jay, we're still on the first question, you're good. So. For those of you who are not too familiar with this, does this make sense? Y equals mx plus b. b is what happened in the beginning, what you already have. m is gonna be your rate. And in math, knowledge is gonna be slope. But then x and y, those are connected. x is the time it takes you to get to y. 
So X is what you need to go through to get to the Y, the results. So guess or no real quick before we continue, does that make sense? Good. So let's go ahead and plug in the values that we have. My party people, what is it that we are trying to achieve? What is the result? How many gallons are we trying to get to? What's the result that we're trying to get to? What's the result that we are achieving? When do we stop? That's right, 600 gallons. That's the point at which we stop. It can hold 600 gallons, so that's as far as we can go. All right, so next up, everyone, do we have a rate that this container is being filled up at? What's that rate again? What's that rate again? Yeah, that's gonna be 28. That's gonna be 28 gallons per minute. And then we have the amount of time. Everyone, do we have the amount of time? Do we have that? No, we don't have that. That's actually, remember, what we're looking for right over here. We're looking for the number of minutes it's gonna to take to fill. So we'll go ahead and write that out right here as X. And then we're gonna add what we had in the beginning. Everyone, how many gallons did we have in the beginning? 120. Yep, right over here, right there. It's 120, so we'll add that in, and voila, we're good to go. We solve this and we're done. Notice how we've plugged everything in appropriately, and that's how you should look to handle any problem that requires you to use a formula or some sort of equation like this. You have got to be prepared to plug things into the right places. So. We're going to solve this and then I'm going to show you the setup for distance rate time and it's going to be the same exact thing and we'll move on. So everyone, first step, you know, we're looking at this equation. The art of solving equations is working backwards. So what do we do first? We're trying to get the X by itself. Do we get rid of the 28 first? Do we get rid of the 120 first? Which one of these do we get rid of first? Yeah, Shane, this is going to be on the website first thing tomorrow morning. Yep, so boom, yeah, the 120 is gonna be what we take care of first. The 28X, you see that those are attached. Those are attached at the hip. We can get rid of that 120 first. So we'll go ahead and do that by saying the opposite of adding 120, that would be subtracting 120 on both sides. So everyone, we still have the 28X on the right side, but what is 600 minus 120? Or 60 minus 12, what's that gonna be? Right, that's gonna be 480, nice and easy. So we have 480. And now our job is gonna to be to do what to both sides? What's the opposite of multiplying X by 28? Right, thanks Janae, appreciate that. Thank you Shandy, that's gonna be again, dividing 28 on both sides. So remember, if, if this was understood, great. You have, a, you have a good understanding of translating English into math, there and there. But if this part here is confusing you, if this part here is giving you headaches, well, this is the solution process. This is the calculation step. So remember, don't get too high, don't get too low, especially if this is frustrating you. This is part of unit seven for the math basics, and it's gonna be in math knowledge as well. Practice, 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 but let's go ahead and finish this up. We're gonna divide both sides by 28. And once we do that, we're gonna come over here and I'll go ahead and just perform that. 28 going into 480. Everyone, 28 goes into 48. How many times? Yep, it's gonna be one. So we'll go ahead and have that there. Subtract the 28, giving us 20 left. All right, so we'll go ahead and drop that zero down. If you had to take a guess, everybody, how many times would you say 28 could go into 200? Because if it's 10, that'll be 280. That's way too much. So it may not even be nine, may not even be eight. You guys are saying seven, so it looks like a lot of us have had the chance to calculate this already. If we go ahead and take 28 times seven, what will that give us? 56, carry the five, two times seven is 14, carry the five is 19. 196, fairly close. So we subtract 196, because that indeed will be seven right here. And we have four left. All right, so my party people, we from here notice that our answer choices, again, it says about how many minutes, right over here. It says about 
how many minutes? And so we have 17 with a decimal, but four out of 28, the remaining four out of 28, that's not gonna be enough to take us up to 18. That's, stay, that's gonna stay down at 17. And so we can actually say that we're done right here and say that B is the answer. And there we are. And we're good. So before you pay any huge amount of dollars or money to anybody claiming that they can help you pass the ASVAB, you should always consider what they offer for free. With us, we're gonna be offering our full program for free for a full week. All you gotta do is do that right there or scan that QR code and you'll get access to all of our classes, practice problems, courses, everything for a full week so you know exactly how it works and you have the exact confidence that you need to raise your score. Get started now. I'll see you in there.